The shapes of 3D solids can be modified with a variety of different tools. Before we start, we'll drag off the navigation tool palette. And we'll do the same with the solid utilities palette that includes the Boolean tools. The first, subtract, allows us to select an existing solid and then one that intersects with it to remove that from the first, like removing the cylinder from that block to create a hole. You'll see the cone intersects with it, and we've removed that from the square block as well. That's the subtract solid tool. The next tool is the add solid tool. This tool allows you to take two individual solids and combine them into one. We'll click the first and the second. Notice the color of the resulting single object is inherited from the first of the two picked. And now yeah, that's a single object. In the third case, the intersect case, these are two solids that intersect with one another. We'll go to wireframe mode so that you can see that. We'll pick the orange. That's the first object. And then pick the blue. Notice the resulting object is the color of the first of the two selected for subtract. Now go to Window in Concept Explorer and make sure that you've clicked the Layers tab. Layers are the electronic version of overlay drafting. It's like working on a variety of clear acetate sheets. You can turn the visibility on and off, but there's only one current work layer which all new items are always added to the current layer. When I click a different layer to make it active, notice it automatically turns it on and then we can turn the visibility off for the booleans layer. So make the fillet chamfer layer the active layer and turn off the visibility of the booleans layer. The next set of tools allow you to create feature-based solids. These are operations that again allow you to modify the existing solids. The first, the blend tool is much like the fillet tool used in 2D, extended to use in 3D. We'll undo that. There are two radius values, and that's because it will create the blend from one end to the other. And you can see what changing the radius for one or the other will do. Take a moment, navigate around the drawing, just to see the result of using the blend tool around the edges of that 3D block object. Now we'll pick the chamfer tool, but before using the tool, let's undo the changes that we've made using the blend tool. Now we're back to where we started. Options appear for the chamfer tool. Let's set the value to 0.5 and then apply it to the edge. We'll undo that set it to 0.25 so you can see the difference. Click the edge, it applies the chamfer. If you press and hold the shift key, you can select each edge and then when you release it applies it to all of the selected edges. The next tool, the hole feature, allows you to create a countersink. There are two diameters one, of course, bigger than the other for a countersink. We use our alignment to align the center of the countersink hole lined up between the midpoints on the horizontal and vertical edges of that face. Next, we'll click the Boss feature. We'll select the face. Again, using alignment to find the center. We'll click and parameters for that appear in the data input window. We'll undo. 
We'll change the draft angle to zero, and now this will add a straight cylinder. Again, using alignment to find the center of that face. Now we'll use the shell feature. The shell feature is a wonderful tool that actually allows you to make something into an open container, if you will, rather than a solid cube, it makes it into an open container. So it actually shells out or cuts out inside. And the thickness for that of the remaining portions is controlled in the data input window. The last, the bend tool, allows you to find the bend angle and then an axis that it will bend around. Let's go back to the Content Explorer and Layers, turn off the display of the fillet and chamfer layer, and turn on the display and make it active for the solid trims layer. Remember, you must make the solid trims layer the current layer before turning off the display of the other. There are other tools available here for editing faces and surfaces. Take time to explore the rest of these tools. We won't use them in this tutorial. We'll go to the Trim Solid tool. First, you select the surface or the solid that defines what will be trimmed away. So in this case, we'll select the block object that defines what will be trimmed away and then we'll click the extruded curve and you'll see that when I drag the block out the profile of that has been removed from the extruded curve. Now we'll undo and this time we'll use the extruded curve and that will be where we trim to. So first pick the solid or surface that defines what you will trim to and then pick what you'll trim to that first object. You pick the portion that you wish to keep and it trims the rest away. The split solid tool behaves in a similar fashion. The difference is that rather than trimming it back to the surface or solid that you selected, it will actually split the solid into two pieces. So both remain.